are watching Turn the Pages, and I am your host, Jordan Rivers. Well, welcome back. We are in season two, and I am so excited because this season is all about college. Yes, that's right. It's our college edition. So we are going to cover everything from scholarships to grants, tutoring, SATs, ACTs, whether or not college is for you, and talk to college counselors and people who have experienced college, such as myself, where we can help you, you know, with the ins and outs of school. So the first thing I want to do is an overview of last season. We talked about how important it is to read in our communities, how it is really, really a tool that needs to be used every single day of our lives. And we talked about are there enough resources? Well, I personally think that there are more than enough resources out here for parents, regardless of their income, to actually make sure that their children read properly and at their grade level. So we want to make sure as parents that we focus on our children's education because they cannot be successful without us. So turn the pages. What's turn the pages, you ask? Well, just in case you forgot, I'll show you our PSA um, that is playing currently on CAN TV throughout the end of the year. I hope you enjoy. At Turn the Pages, we are changing lives one page at a time. Our mission is to promote literacy and increase the love of reading among children, middle-aged readers, and teens. At our school library and bookstore visits, Children and families have the opportunity to hear authors read, interact with the characters from the book, create amazing art projects based off of the books, and have their pictures taken on the red carpet, and much more. For more information, please visit our website. Now, that is what Turn the Pages is all about. Um, promoting literacy in all communities. So if you are a library, let us know by contacting us on our email or through website, www.turn-the-pages.org. Let us know that you're interested in having me come to do a reading for the kids in the library, and I will be there with bells on. So back to our college edition. So the first thing that I really want to cover is getting started and what are your goals? So a lot of people may want to make more money, may want to make themselves more valuable in jobs or in, in a certain position so that you can increase your income and who doesn't want to increase their income? I don't know anyone out there who does not want to make more money. So, um, and also, for me, I love school. I am a professional college student. Yes, I am. But one thing that I love about college is that you can go to school for something that you truly love. It's not like high school. It's not like elementary school. If you decide that you want to be an artist of any sort, where, where if it's a theater major or if you want to be an author or a screenwriter, you, you can definitely go to college and you can make it happen. But you have to remember that you make that happen. Nobody else does. So... Let's talk about goals. Why should I make goals for myself? Well, it depends on where you want your life to be. For me, I want to be an author. I want to be a TV host. And luckily for me, I have a degree in writing, but I also read a lot. So again, there's this thing that turned the pages. We, we do, and we promote literacy. So I'm always gonna mention reading, no matter how many episodes we get into, please read. You have to read in order to get in college. You have to be very serious about your test scores and exams, and you have to do a lot of research when it comes to finding a school. And so why go to college? We already said to have more job opportunities, to earn more money. And I went on scholarship.com and it said a person who goes to college usually earns more than a person who doesn't. 
on average over a lifetime, someone who spends two years in college earns $250,000 more than someone who doesn't. That's a quarter of a million dollars over a lifetime. So that means the more education you have under your belt, the further you will go in life and career. So let's talk about expanding your knowledge base. A college education helps you acquire a range of knowledge in many subjects, as well as advanced knowledge in the specific subjects you're most interested in. Like I mentioned, if you're interested in the arts, you can definitely go to college and focus on the specific art area that you're really interested in to make that a career of yours. Now, let's not forget about the doctors and the lawyers and the scientists and the teachers and a lot of things you can become in the professional world that can, of course, help other people. So you also, like I stated, my personal, my personal knowledge Increase your potential. Make yourself valuable to whatever situation that you're in. So, for example, a personal experience of mine, I am a Columbia College Chicago grad. Yes, I am. Um, I was a student worker in the records office, and I was asked if I wanted to learn how to perform a job where we printed out transcripts. Everyone else they were kind of nervous. It's a big job, and it's something that you don't want to mess up on. And even though I was taking classes, you know, in my artist major, I decided to get a little more experience in, you know, printing out transcripts and doing what my bosses, they did for a living, and they made really good money. So I decided to learn, and because of that, I was able to get a pay increase that summer because I was the only intern who decided to be knowledgeable in, in that area. And so that helped increase my potential as a candidate for other jobs. So it, it did help me get experience. So even after school, if I wasn't able to get a job as an artist at that time, I still had something that I can do to bring an income until I became the artist that I am today. So increase your potential, people. It's so important. So let's talk about four-year colleges and community colleges. There is nothing wrong with our community colleges not here in Chicago or anywhere. They are just as great as universities and they are less expensive than universities and you can get your associate's degree, you can get a certificate. There are so many opportunities for you at a community college. And later this season, we'll be talking to someone that I know personally who didn't get into the university of their choice. They were absolutely crushed and they ended up having to go to a community college. They were not happy about it at all, but it just turns out that that community college had a partnership with a great university for engineering, something that she wants to do and become. So again, when it comes to college, you have to do your research. So I want to just throw some information out here for you, so make sure you grab that pen and pencil, or you can always tune in on our website for any past shows this season and last season. And let me take you right over to collegemajors101.com. If you go to collegemajors101.com, you can see that there are just a plethora of different majors that you can um, go to school for. So I want to show this to you as an example. So just in case you're not sure what you want to be at this time, you can start doing your research. Eighth grade and freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, listen up and follow suit. Let's go into, I'll say, English writing. So um, English writing is being an English or literature major in college will prepare you for many different careers. A bachelor's in English writing is especially useful in law, politics, publishing, and journalism. If you truly love writing, then the sky is the limit. 
Look for programs that actively place its students, internships or co-ops with publishers or newspapers. Top students in the 21st century won't just read the old classics, they are being prepared to write the new ones. So as you can see, I clicked on the English writing major and it gave you examples on what you can become. Now, let's go into video game design. It says that the world of video game design is not for those who simply love to play video games. It is a complex science that has become one of the nation's most popular college majors. VGD combines artist talent with high mathematics and computer programming ability. The serious designer will look for schools with industry, current facilities, small classes, high postgraduate employment rates, and supportive faculty who come from the actual gaming industry. So again, this website is collegemajors101.com. So if you are trying to figure it out, what it is you wanna do, whether it's medical and life sciences, visual and performance arts, liberal arts, engineering and technology, and definitely business, go throughout this site and do your research as into what you want to do and the possibilities um, of going to school for these majors. So, I hope I did not overwhelm you, but let's talk about the college, uh, your, your counselors at school and how they actually help you get prepared for college. So, but if you have any questions, please call in at 312-738-1060. The number is right there. Well, this way, right there. <laughs> so make sure you call in, especially before, what's that, 720? I wanna make sure whatever questions you have that I can answer them properly and we won't be cut off because the show ends about 730. So. Let's talk about the 20 questions to ask your guidance counselor. So that means freshman year is definitely the appropriate time to talk about college. A lot of people think that your life doesn't start until after high school. No, that's exactly when your life starts. That's when you should be thinking about what school you want to go to and what you want to be and research how much your, your profession will actually make. Where do you want to live? This is the time where it's just not, you know, for you to have fun and be a cheerleader or a football player or even, you know, in the band or a flag girl like I was. But it's time to take your career very seriously because your grades are gonna be very important. So if you are not studying and working hard in the very beginning, it may be a little harder for you than for other people if your grades are not up to par, because then that means that it may be a little harder for you to pass the test. And you definitely want to be able to pass your test in order to get in the college of your choice. No need for you know you to be disappointed, just work hard. I know that can, be overwhelming, but you can definitely do it. So, what are the required and recommended courses for graduation and for college prep? You definitely need to know that. Make sure that you create a notebook so that you can organize all these questions and all the different schools that you may be interested in because th this folder will have your organized thoughts and a timeline, a calendar on when certain things are due. Like when is your FAFSA due? When is your admissions application due? What do you have to turn in? I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to turn in some letters of recommendation. So it's very important to make sure that you're very active in school. For instance, if you wanna go into politics, it's very important to get on your school student council immediately. Start becoming active in your school so that it's easier for you to become active in your community and it looks really great on your resume for college and your chances are a lot higher to be able to do what you want to do instead of being forced to do something that you don't want to do. How should I work my schedule so I complete them? Again, organization is the key. 
go to your high school counselor, talk about your high school schedule. Do you have time to, you know, be in activities after school or what type of college are you looking at and what kind of grades do you want to have? What are your study habits going to be? How much are you going to read up on, you know, your professional career for the future so that you can be well versed? What he left uh, what elective courses do you recommend? So when you go and talk to your high school counselor, make sure that you let them know your interest in your professional career and in college so that they can make sure that you take the appropriate electives. For instance, if you want to be an optometrist, you're probably going to take a lot of science classes and they should be AP classes because colleges love AP. It's something about saying your honors, then you're really smart, that they just, they look at that. They want to make sure that you challenge yourself. So don't be scared if there's a class that's honors, AP, or whatever your high school may call it. Just be prepared to be challenged and don't give up. When is the preliminary SAT or National Merit Scholarship Corporation exam going to be given. So, for instance, have your calendar ready. If the test won't be given until June 5th, then that means starting the school year, you have a whole year to study, to look for classes, to get tutoring, whatever is going to be on this test, you have a whole year to prepare on, on top of your academic schedule that you already have. So it's very important that you remember high school is not just playtime. It is time to prepare yourself for the future. Is your school a testing center? for the ACT or SAT, you need to know. Because if they're not, you have to find the proper location of the testing area. And that's very important because every testing location has their own rules. So if you need to fill out the uh, application in advance and pay a certain fee, you need to know, know that in advance so that you can prepare. So you never want to feel rushed when you're doing anything because it really stresses you out, makes you anxious, and you just kind of want to have smooth sailing. And unfortunately, things do happen, so you want to be as prepared as you possibly can be. Do you have any after school or evening sessions available for college planning or for taking the SAT or ACT? Again, make sure that you are prepared. Ask about the ACT, the SAT, any preparation tutoring that you can get, please go out and get it. So even if it's a class that's $500 and you're working part-time or your parents, it gives your parents time to put that money aside so that you can enroll in the, those courses that will help better your future. Do you have college handbooks or other guides that I can browse or borrow? So make sure that you actually go see your high school counselor and you utilize the services that they provide. See what kind of materials they have and knowledge that can help you prepare for college. The goal is college, right? That's what high school is all about, to prepare you for college. And college prepares you for your professional field. So talk to your high school counselor and not just when you're getting in trouble. What activities can I do at home and over the summer to get ready for college? Now, I can talk for about an hour on this alone. So, for instance, if you want to work with kids, why don't you volunteer in a daycare one summer just for a couple hours every day to get that experience? Then you actually meet people in that professional arena that can give you some advice, but then you also have time to change your mind if you decide that your summer and with working for kids is not your cup of tea, you have time to make another decision by getting involved in something else that next summer. You never want to go to school for something that you really don't want to do. College is very expensive. 
later this um, season, we will definitely get into scholarships and grants. So make sure you tune into every episode you possibly can. But college is expensive, so internships and summer jobs that go according to your field is very important. So for instance, we do have a lot of, uh, what's the word? We have a lot of help in the city. We have a lot of different programs for you. For instance, One Summer Chicago is a very great program and they work with Gallery 37. So I have a son who is interested in television and animation. So he applied for a job in TV production, again, to make sure that he is making the proper decision about what he wants to do. He's making sure that he gets all the experience in it. So if, it, if he changes his mind, then he definitely has time. What kinds of grades do different colleges require? So that is very important. I would suggest that regardless of what school you go to, that you make sure you keep your grades up at all times. That's just my personal preference. Don't stress yourself out about, oh, you know, I should have no more than, you know, one C on my report card. Try your best to get A's and B's, mostly A's. But if you get a B and maybe C, you're still doing okay. It's not going to be the end of the world, but remember to study, 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 and definitely watch the company you keep. The, the more you hang around people who are like-minded, who want to be successful in the future, the more you become a success. A success. So remember that. Where do other kids from this school go? So when you're looking into different colleges, you kind of want to know, you know, where do a lot of these kids come from? Are they from the Midwest? Are they, you know, from the East Coast or the West Coast? It does make a difference because wherever you go, you want to be comfortable. So that means going on school tours, which we'll be talking about that later this season but you know just do your research in the school make sure that you would be comfortable because it's college you're going to be there for four years if not more if you decide to go for a master's so definitely do your research can you put me in touch with recent grads who are going to colleges on my wish list so you want to go to college there may be someone who has graduated who is going to the same college that you are dreaming to go to. And it would be great if you can begin a relationship with them and say, hey, look, tell me, you know, what what's so great about this college? I already know what, what's great about it, but on a personal level, tell me what you love about it and tell me what you don't like about it. And, you know, build a relationship with people so that you can really find out. You want to make sure that the college you go to is going to be the one that you want to stay at. There is nothing more stressful than going to school and then having to transfer. Like, that's a whole nother episode. So just make sure that you see your college counselor and ask them if they have a database and of previous graduates and the schools that they went to so that you can reach out and get information about the school of your choice. Let's talk about um, if my colleges need a recommendation from you, how can I help you know me better so it can be more personal? One thing about letters of recommendation is that they can get you in but they can keep you out. So having a great relationship with your counselor and all of your teachers is so very important. If you're not active in class, that means participation or in a way where the teacher really knows your personality, they can't vouch for you and tell you or the school in general what type of great person that you will be if you are accepted into their university. So unfortunately, there's never enough time to go over anything, but don't worry because I'll be back next Monday making sure that you are prepared for college. I have a special guest. You don't want to miss her. It's all about college links. And then the next episode after, I'll have um, the United Negro College Fund. So you definitely want to stay tuned um, to all this juicy college information that we have prepared for you. So thank you so much for tuning in to uh, Turn the Pages on CAN TV, Channel 21. And I guess 
this is the end of the show. I hope to see you next week.